This is Come and See with Father Philip Hall, turning to and following Christ in the 21st century. Father Philip is parish priest at All Saints of Lincolnshire Orthodox Church in Lincoln, England. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading 1 Corinthians 6, verses 12 to 20, and then Luke 15, 11 to 32. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belong to God. That's what St. Paul says. And this is a message that both the young men in the story of the prodigal son could have done well with listening to. The prodigal lived up to the nickname we give him. He lived in loose living, wild, debauched, dissipated living, spiritually wasting every moment that God sent him. The other one lived a life of bitterness, not of joy. So together they were ending up debauched, self-glorifying, rude, prayerless, unhealthy, miserable, petty-minded, judgmental, arrogant, lazy, snobbish, and probably unhealthy, overworked, sleepy, grumpy, and so goes on. Very much, I guess, like many of us live, when we take our eyes off God. But St. Paul is wanting us to live with our bodies and our spirits dedicated as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now when we build a temple, a church building, how do we build it? Do we build it carelessly without plans, without form, without structure, without looking to see what the tradition is? Of course not. We build it with stones and bricks and concrete and cement. We build it with plaster work, we build it with beautiful wood, we build it using lovely marble and beautiful paint and gilding and frescoes and carving with good acoustics, with geometry and splendour and usefulness, usefulness of worship. We build it to express our faith, our doctrine, we make it clean and tidy with fresh flowers, always redecorated, and we make sure even the garden around it and the car park around it are beautiful and functional and do what they're meant to do. Everything is thought of. We have saloons and we have bathrooms, we have everything that's needed. Everything. And one of the things the priest will do with the, the wardens of the church is go round the church every week and check the slates, the tiles, the decoration to make sure that they're not cobwebs over everything. There's no damp, no rust, no dirt. The flowers are fresh and not wilting, and so on. That's what we do to our temples. And every week there will be a team of people with... Um, vacuum cleaners and brushes and hand brushes and dustpans and they will have uh, polish and cloths and they will be using wax <laughs> and all those other cleaning materials that you see being used within a church. There'll be people with toilet paper in rolls rushing off to the bathrooms. There'll be other people with piles of flowers decorating the icons. That's how you make a temple for us to worship in. And we say, here is the house of God. But you, St. Paul says, need to be a temple of God, glorifying God in your body and your spirit, both of which already belong to God. We make a temple and we offer it to God. God made you. And we need to offer that back to God, not in loose living or being miserable, petty, judgmental, arrogant, lazy, sleepy, by overworking, by being unhealthy, by making yourself 
weak and flabby, both spiritually and physically. You don't do it by making yourself self-glorifying or rude, or you don't become a temple by refusing to pray and wasting the time that God has given you and the body that God has given to you. So what do you do? You make sure that your body and your spirit is pure. It is free from sin of all sorts. St. Paul mentions here fornication. But every sin, we clean them out. We rush ourselves to confession if we find ourselves sinning. Just like if somebody spilt something in the temple that is the church, we wouldn't leave it there. If the charcoal fell on the floor, we'd scrape it up. If a candle tipped over and poured wax everywhere, we'd scrape it off. We'd return it to its pristine beauty. And we need to do that also with our bodies and our souls. We don't give ourselves over to fornication, to licentiousness, to drunkenness. We don't lie in bed until all hours. We don't um, fornicate. We don't look at pornography. We don't do all the other things that come with these things. We're not greedy. We remain in control of ourselves. And it's not just those things. We need to be healthy and physically exercised and clean and appropriately dressed. I'm not saying grandly dressed. You know, some of us, we need to dress so people know who we are. So a priest dresses like a priest. A lay person dresses like a lay person. A man and a woman in their own appropriate clothing as well. Um, so that we are set before God, hour by hour, in a decent, appropriate way. We must use our bodies to express humility and obedience. Obedience to the canons, obedience to the church, obedience to each other, and humility before all people and before God more than that. So we also need to be well exercised in prayer and reading scripture. So we not only go on our daily walk or run or toddle <laughs> or stagger about the place or manage to cross the room in our daily exercise because we're very elderly, we're infirm, but we also exercise our prayer life, our spiritual life, by reading the Fathers, by reading the lives of the saints, by reading the scriptures, of course, first and foremost, and by praying, by using the Psalms, and by using the prayers that much greater spiritual people than I am have given us to read and to offer to God. And then we glorify God in our joyfulness, our joyfulness at this beautiful creation that he has put us in. Or we rejoice when we see other people, these other images of God that we see in our towns and our cities, our villages, out in the fields. People running beautifully and smoothly, children playing in the park, old people smiling at their grandchildren, people going off to buy ingredients to make food as a sign of love for each other. Be joyful in these things. Relish them. Be joyful when you see somebody else's creative ability in decoration or artistic skill or just noticing and being able to use colour in a wonderful and beautiful way. In this way that person reflects the creative image of God. All of these things, be joyful in them. Glorify in life. Admire the beauty of the creation around you. Just now, here, the first insects are beginning to buzz around. <laughs> Very daintily they're going about. And little clouds of insects, uh, all dancing above pools of water or underneath the trees, getting ready in themselves for laying their eggs in the spring and bringing us that new life that we have all around us. 
Birds are beginning to wander around with sticks in their mouths, think, saying to themselves, time that I built a nest and started bringing up the next generation. Notice these things. The buds, the buds on the trees are beginning to swell. Look at them. Marvel in them. The first blackthorn in the hedges is just beginning to come out. And I even saw the first glimmer, the first little bit of an opening bud in a hawthorn bush. These things offer this joy back to God. Glorify God in your body and your spirit. Glorify him with your eyes, with your ears, as you see things and you hear things. And then, of course, glorify God in your self-giving, in your generosity with love, with your time, with your practical help for other people, with your money, with your hospitality, in caring for others, in looking after this, these parents' children while they go to have time together, walking alone without their children. <laughs> That's also very important. Be generous with your money, with your hospitality to those people who are alone and shut in, are housebound in hospital. It's difficult to visit people in hospital at the moment, but um, I've managed it a couple of times this last week. And then, of course, be self-disciplined. We don't allow the church in the middle of our town to go to rack and ruin, do we? We inspect it, we look at it, and we say, this floor needs to be varnished. These walls need to be painted. <laughs> this roof needs to be tiled. Do the same to yourself. Look at yourself and say, oh, I'm getting fat. Oh, I'm getting unhealthy. Oh, I'm spending too much time at the gym. I'm beginning to look like a gorilla rather than a human being. <laughs> and get my purpose. Make sure that when you're tired, you go to bed. And when you're refreshed, you get up. And you spend a reasonable amount of time in bed. Neither too little, nor too much. So you are rested appropriately. Make sure you work hard. But not so hard that you never see your husband or your wife or your friends or your children or your other relatives. That would be terrible. We're not here to spend all our time working hard for some company that doesn't care about you and will immediately replace you if you plop down dead. So work hard. Work hard appropriately. And then, when you have worked hard, go and play hard and pray hard and study hard and rejoice hard and glorify God hard with the rest of your life. Focus your whole life on Christ. Make that the very centre the tabernacle of your body, like as we have in the church, on the holy table, a tabernacle containing the gifts, and we have right in front of it the holy gospel, right in front of us there. So make Christ the focus of your entire life. Receive Holy Communion regularly, Prepare assiduously. Receive the other sacraments whenever you can. And be joyful. For the temple of God is a joyful place where we glorify God in our bodies and our spirits and we raise up ourselves in our whole lives as a joy-filled gift for him who is the source of our life, our joy, our hope, our everything. 
your prayers. God bless you. Amen. Join us again next time for Come and See with Father Philip Hall, a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.